it has had its ups and downs, of course, but I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Um, I love what I do. I love standing behind that chair. I like meeting my clients, just talking about hair. I'm just excited about my job. And I know it sounds Joe, but I love my job. Um, I love to meet new people. And I like to make people day just aiding them and being beautiful for themselves, for their spouses, or for, for whoever. I just enjoy doing it. Um, I have a studio called J Mills Hair Studio. It's currently located in West Philadelphia. Summer 18, we will be moving to a bigger spot in North Philadelphia. Um, I own my own product line, which consists of eight products now. Summer 18, I also will be um, starting the skin line and the men's um, hair care line. Oh, cool. Um, so where did the idea of your business derive from? Where did it come from? Me wanting to do hair or to work for myself? To work for yourself. Um, I've worked in a lot of shops. I ran into a lot of people and uh, I'm probably just a little too bossy to work for anyone. To Just to be completely honest, I'm probably just a little too bossy. And uh, I want what I want when I want it. So for me, owning my own salon was the best thing for me to allow me to continue on with my craft, continue to go to classes, and continue to do what I love without uh, someone nitpicking in my ear of how it should be done. So I'm able to do what I want, you know, of course with some rules, but it's still, I can design and flow the way I need to, no matter what on my own time. All right, how, um, how, if any, have you got through any of the hurdles of you being a Muslim business owner? Just from just from you being a Muslim female in business. I mean, from a Muslim, just being a Muslim period is like when I go to like maybe some hair shows or hair classes in the beginning, because not so much as now, but in the beginning, I still got the stares of this Muslim lady coming in here with all this black one, and she want to tell me about my hair. Even in the beginning, I had some clients who weren't Muslim that would be like, "You do Muslim? You do non-Muslim hair?" And I'm like, "Sure, I just don't do men's hair." Yeah, let's clear it um, up. We get our hair done. <laughs> no, we get our hair done. But that's a it's, a it's a stereotype. They don't think we get our hair done. They don't think we get dressed. They just think we wear it. Somebody asked me, really believe that I wear this in the shower, and I was like, I swear, <laughs> and I was like, no. She like, do you take it off even in the shower? I'm like, I take this off as soon as I hit the door. Yes. That's just <laughs> I turn this off as soon as I hit the door. So for me, it's just like. This is just, this is my religion, but it defines me, but it doesn't. I don't have limitations because I'm a Muslim. I don't want to do men hair anyway. Even if I wasn't a Muslim, I don't want to do hair. I don't want to have a kind of, I don't want to talk about the football. and the, I don't want to do those kind of things. So for me, it's just like, I, like, I love doing what I do. And I respect anyone who does it. I respect people who own their own business because you take on a lot. Owning your own business. You definitely take on a lot but at the end it's worth it you can go home and put your feet up and be like that's mine yeah. I can open my door and close it when I feel like it and I'm excited about it I don't want to do nothing else the hair I feel like the hair industry is different because I owned a salon for three years and I had five stylists but when my two head stylists moved to Atlanta you know we sort of kind of went under because everyone else the turnover was so high. Everyone else had the mentality, I could do hair, I want to open up my own business. I felt like no one had the mentality of like, she has everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, let me go here and work, and everything I need is here, and then when I go home, but I mean like, some girls would work for like two months, they start in their basement, they start in their kitchen, you know, kind of, but I remember you were saying like, you're too bossy. I'm just like, I guess I'm a little curious. Is that the mentality of... See, here's my thing. I think for me, I have worked for the... I've worked for the Kufar for, for more, than, more than half of my career. And um, it was a little... For me, I just think that if I have a set schedule, right? My schedule, my client is from 10 to 4. If it's 4 o'clock, I'm 5 o'clock and I'm done, 
I should be able to go home. You also have to understand that I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I still need to be able to go home and tend to my family. And some people feel like this job is everything that they have. So you got to be here from 5 in the morning to 10 at night. Mm. I can't live like that. I've been a mom all my life. My children are important to me. And my children will come before anybody, before any money, because that's the reason I'm making this money. Mm. And if I can't make it to provide for them, if I can't spend no time with them, what's really the benefit? I feel like, um, with the closing on your point, I feel like that too many people have that uh, too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Mm -hmm. kind of mentality, craving a barrel type thing, yeah, but right. don't understand business because that's exactly. why a lot of um, stylists end up being unsuccessful in business because people think that they got it, oh, oh I know what I'm doing, I got this, I yeah. can her do it, I can do it, and then when you're on the forefront, it's totally different, mm -hmm. and then when you notice that what you thought was sweet wasn't, you know, it's a lot more money to put out. It's a lot more money. I went broke running mine. It's a lot more money to put out. It's a lot more money, but the thing of it is, is that what people have to understand also is if you go from a, a salon to your home and no, I won't take away from nobody because I know like a lot of people put bowls in their salon, their homes, but the ones that don't, they have to understand that people enjoy comfortability. People enjoy being somewhere where they can be comfortable, where they can relax. Nobody wants their breasts pressed up against no sink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, Boy, it's, your nose, it's very much it's in your ears. You know? And then when we children, you think, about it, right, you think about it like a child, your mom used to throw you in the sink and it's like you drowning me. So it's like, why would you want to have somebody actually stand and bent over and you got sciatica, right. we old folks, you know? And they want me to pay here. They yeah, and then for that. you want you gonna say after I'm done and you sitting there boo booing them and ran over your feet a couple times. Now I'm cooking <laughs> dinner in between your wash and curl. I don't you like, like fish. Let me flip this fish. I'll be back. And now you go home and, and, and I want and I want forty five dollars from you. I want fifty dollars from you. From the That's why a lot of people fall short. And then it's like the other thing is that I like I had to learn over time is that people you gotta give people a vibe they can't get no wells because. You, I've had clients, literally, I have clients, and several can attest, I've been doing hair for 23 years, right? And I literally have about 10 of the same clients that I started out doing. Especially my first girlfriend, who the first head I ever touched, Humble she's still left. my client with Humble Be Left. And I've been to about, I don't know how many shops, but it took me a long time to, you know, get to that mentality, but listen, it's aren't you tired? Here. Yeah, it, it shows loyalty, it shows loyalty to but you and it shows that you also are. Also, it shows disrespect too from from me as a stylist to my clients because if I and I, I love the fact that you're loyal, I've taken advantage of your loyalty. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. that sometimes you do take advantage of their loyalty, like they ain't going to wear oh until that client sitting in somebody else's chair. Like, girl, I'm tired of running around. So eventually, you know, you kind of get get bre like bred into knowing like I have to like chill a little bit. But like you said with those clients with those uh people, after a while you just think, Oh, I can run my own shop, I could do this until so you get in there and it's like, oh no, like mm -hmm. I got phone, I gotta pay this electric, I gotta pay this water, I gotta pay mm -hmm. this gas, I gotta keep these products running. And trying to do that and still trying to swing things a certain kind of way, it don't work out like that all the time. The one thing I couldn't do was hair. That's it. That's I had the hair salon. Then they were like, well, you should go to school. I was like, no, you, if it's not in you, and I think that that's what a lot of people fell in I think that if it's in you and you want to do it, like you, when you hear people talk about hair and you hear them explaining themselves, they're telling you in their speech that I got this. This is what I want to do. This is my passion. When it's your passion, you're going to get past all the obstacles. Yeah. You're, right. you're going to supersede your, your goals. You're going to make it. Because you believe in yourself. Yeah. If you believe in yourself, and for me, it's like, you know, I'm always calling on the Lord. All the time. Asking for help. You know, just making this something beneficial, period. And when you're doing that, you're putting your trust in the Lord. I don't care what nobody say. It works. Yeah, that's, that's a true point, too. But I've been in a position where I didn't have trust in the Lord. Because I felt like I had too many things happening at one time. You know what I'm saying? And you fall short in being comfortable. You know what I mean with certain things. So, like with me, I I was like, uh, I've been Muslim for a very long time, but I wasn't a practicing Muslim. So I've been practicing wholeheartedly for now like ten years, going on ten years, yeah, nine. Maybe. Can you I mean, so, mm -hmm. oh, I mean. But before then, I was covering in and out, you know, did a little devil here and there. But I was doing weaves also. So for the past five years, I haven't. 
So I went from making, I, I said did the math. <laughs> After a while, I was like, hold up, wait a minute. I went from making like $4,000 a week and not really, it, it, it put me in a predicament where law wouldn't allow me to touch the money. I was in a situation where I was literally making this money, but I never saw it. I'm like, hold up. Like, okay, I'm with this. I'm going to pay rent, pay the bill, pay that. But I don't have nothing to show for it. So that 4000 was like, okay, four to 5000 Because I was doing maybe, I would do about 15 years a day. And out of those 15 years, literally, maybe about eight of them was weeds. So between sewing. That's like sun up to sun down. Yeah, like literally. But it was like, but but it's literally sun up. Because after fudge, I would go to the shop. And it would be, my clients would be sitting outside in their cars. They would line up at the door. So it was it was serious. And um in the bench I had a shop where like, you remember 50th Street, right? Lancaster Avenue. There was a bench. So the bench would be filled from one end to the other. But here we go, getting into not being business savvy. Because I just was interested in the money. You know what I'm saying? Not really caring about the fact that, okay, I got two weaves in front of my wash and curl. Not thinking about the fact that, okay, she getting color, she getting a weave, but I got a wash and curl. So in the midst of them getting it, getting situated for that, I could be shampooing and getting her situated. I wasn't on that tight time. And it took some time for me to get there. But then it was like, I didn't, I can't say that I wholeheartedly trusted in the law until I decided to say, listen, you have to stop. Like the weaves was like becoming like a little bit much and then like the reminders and all of the above what i was doing was becoming redundant so i was like okay at this point say to yourself it's time to cut it off let's stop and that's when i got i prayed about it i kept making do i that whatever you know is meant for me it will miss me and i let it go mm -hmm. and from that point on i stopped doing the weeds and not cold turkey i called my clients like um I'm not this Ramadan, like, because it was so crazy. Because I really had in my mind that, okay, every Ramadan, I stopped. So my client was like, How many days you got left? When y'all in? Is your in coming up? And I'm like, Yeah, they're like, Girl, I made my appointment already. I'll be here for my weed, girl, because my head child. And they would get braids for the month of Ramadan. So they knew, like, when I was done, we back at it. But that last time I had a couple of them that actually cussed me out, like, What I'm supposed to do? I had some that had, you know, um, um, alopecia areata. I had some that had universes, so they didn't have any here. So I was like making cats and different things like that, and it was in tears. But I, it was hurting me, but I just was like, okay, after this round, I'm going cold turkey. I'm not doing it no more. It's a wrap. I'm done. And literally, from that point on, the co my coloring, for some reason, and I'm saying this because it's real, my color, my hand with the color, before I even started doing all these other extra classes, I already was doing color, but it was just my color was like real vibrant, popping, crazy. Hello and Christian. Nine, well, Hello and Christian. So, that, so that, that I'm a testament to the fact that that what you leave off for a law sake, he will re replace it with better. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then when I asked for them, that, that coin that I asked for for that color, nobody had a problem paying it. And when I had my clients, they was like, you know what? I'm going to just stop wearing the weave. I'm going to go natural then. If this is what you want to do, I'm going to just go natural because I'm not losing you. I want you to remain my hair. And that's how I've been rolling. And how many of that? That's been five years now. So aside from weave, is there any, anything else that you don't do? Um... No, no, <laughs> no weaves, no lashes, I'm, I'm no eyebrows, no none of that do. stuff. No, no anything that I need to do, or anything artificial. I don't do braids. Um, and the whole yarn thing, I'm kind of like up in the air, and I hope nobody get me for this. But I'm like up in the air about it because you hear so many different things. Like it can't be longer than the hair, your length of your hair. It can't be this. It can't be that. So I just leave it all completely because that which I don't really understand. I can ask about it, but then it's like why wear it anyway? Sometimes it's you know? a lot of different. So it's it's a lot, yeah, it's yarn. yarn. So for me, so I just. I just leave it, I just leave it alone, period. Mm -hmm. so what, the I'm yarn just, braids? Yeah, yarn yeah. braids. I just don't I'm braid cool, regular man. hair, um, color, wash and curls. I'll even do some lock maintenance, but that's about it. Not um, the yarn braids, I just... Now, I what's, like, the, what's the ruling on the locks? They grow from dirt, so they filthy. Sure they have yeah. them. I don't have no locks. But what if you wash them? They built from dirt. They collect from dirt. Like, if they're twisting down, you can wash them, but the, built, the dirt is, like, built up and interlocked in the hair, so. Do I have, do I have locks? Ooh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be totally honest. <laughs> you want to embarrass yourself on the radio. Yeah, I'm going to ask that. And you going to show me that patch, child. You know? <laughs> Oh, but wait, I, I, um, I don't want you see it's no, no, don't, don't, do it. don't do it, don't do it. Next, next, one, next question, one. please. <laughs> next one. That's all I'm trying to do. Inshallah, can we move on to the next question? <laughs> you got 
I fear a little sis, come here. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm trying to get it. Wait, wait. We won't, we won't train about it. We won't get it. We won't be all right about it. Moving right along. Next question. I comb my hair. I comb my hair, y'all. Like, <laughs> you're not telling you not to lie, even when joking. <laughs> y'all need to talk about something. Else. I'm gonna move on to the next question. She keep let's leave this like where is it? It's people that know you out here. Like, come on. <laughs> and get the camera off me so everybody know that's me talking. Stop. <laughs> Wait, you videotaping? She's mm-hmm. live. You need to stop it. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, so, um, all right, so. <laughs> I can't get your hook. That's how both of y'all crazy. Yeah. All right, um, if y'all could give one person advice um, that is thinking about starting their own business, um, starting their own hair business, their own hair salon, um, what would you give them? What, what would you tell them? Write a business plan. Set some realistic goals. Um, and be realistic about how much money you can put out at this point. Mm-hmm. Starting out, you need to have a certain type of budget. And you need to know that first starting out, you ain't going to become a millionaire. Because a lot of people be like, I know you got it. And I'd be like, I have bills. <laughs> you know, things happen. I have an overhead to take care of. I'm still trying to build on different things. So I, I don't want to be rude and say stay in your lane. But realistically, you have to stay in the lane that works for you. It costs money. It costs money to run this business. It definitely does. And I will be realistic about the money I'm putting out. Just basically writing everything down, a business plan, setting realistic goals, and being mindful of your budget. Oh, I forgot we had a caller. Oh. Sorry, you can call back. (laughs) Sorry, y'all. We're running our mouths. <laughs> also, let me touch on something because my sister just texted me and, and <laughs> told me to make sure I explain. Also, um, dreadlocks come from the imitation of the kufar because the Rastafarians wear dreadlocks and it's a, a, for a religious purpose. So, oh, we do not imitate the kufar. MashaAllah. Sure Alright, um, so what advice would you give someone that's trying to go into the field? So, first and foremost, before you even get that far into making a business plan, I believe that you have to have a passion for what you're doing. Because without that passion, you won't be able to even get close to implementing anything that has to do with the business. You won't have that love for it. You won't have that thrive for it. That makes you want that to be your course of action as far as like your business. Um, secondly, I wrote some PowerPoints. <laughs> you have to um, be able to... Um, Cultivate their business because cultivation is paramount. So with um, cultivating your business, you need to be clear on what you need in order to make a successful business. Like you gotta have heart because <laughs> this ain't this ain't like no running the park. And everybody sometimes a lot of people just wake up in the morning and think, oh, I'm gonna do hair, and it's not that kind of thing. Well, you can sit back and be like, oh, that's easy because I seen her. It's it's not easy. Like I said. Um, I've been in the business for 23 years, but for the past three years, I can honestly say I'm a stylist. You know what I'm saying? Because for the past, <laughs> the rest of these years, the 23 years I've been out here, I've been doing hair. But these last three years, and I say this all the time, I've become a stylist. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's, um, it's not so much uh, wanting to put out, like, a, a, be a show off. It's not about that because this is really, like, what's in my heart and that's what I love to do. And also, um, you got to be positive and inspirational to other people. Because if you're negative all the time, or you have that mentality, like you think you got it going on, like you have to be clear that that what you are put on a pedestal for, or you think you're on a pedestal, log and take it at any time. Mm -hmm. And you got to constantly be inspiring other people to be comfortable in what they do in order for you to, um, you know, aspire to do what you do also. To um, piggyback off of that, it's important that. Because when I first started out, I just was like, I do hair. That's what I do. The past six years, I can say that I've attended more classes in six years than I've done the entire my entire time in business. So it's important that you continue to educate yourself. Trends change. Mm-hmm. And it's important that you, with all of that, all of the appreciation, all of the, you can do this, you can do that. Like she said, Allah can take it from you, but we still have to be faithful to Allah. 
we got to be grateful to him and appreciate what he has given us. Because he could have gave this crap to anyone else. He surely didn't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just to appreciate, you know, and be grateful that you have it. You know, and that you have the support that you have. And you have the clients who love you. You know, I've had, we, I've had touching conversations with my clients. To the point where my clients have become people that I'm like, I love her. You know, like, that's my girl. I genuinely love her. You know, and surround yourself with good people who want good for you. Not just people who want to just sit there and watch, but people who really want to want good for you. They rooting for you. You know, y'all helping each other. Y'all aiding each other. Well, you should always surround yourself with positive people and with people that can help you grow and people that you can help grow. Yeah, because there's a lot of people, I hear people say, I only be with winners, I only hang with winners, but out of that winner's circle, how many people are wanting to see you win? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the yep. biggest Who thing. Who want to like, see you grow? Right, I'm a winner, I'm, I hang with winners, all I do is be with winners, and it's like at the end of the day, that's all cool, that's so all cool you But how many of them are willing to help you win, or, or anybody you. else in general, period? Because if you got a, a like, I, I'm one that's firm upon, like, People always have like these circles, quote unquote circles. But the real value of who you are comes out of you helping other people. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and I've been kicked a couple times. You know what I'm saying? I've been down a lot. But my my motto is like I'm going worse than some and better than others. So at the end of the day, I don't have room to really like downplay nobody else or whatever else they got going on because I've been there. I could you know do that also. But I'll get around to that when I explain you know, my my bio or my intro, you know. <laughs> it's ain't never made now what I what I'm talking about. But yeah. All right. Um well you can do that now because you were supposed to do that right after me. Oh uh, well, well, we well, y'all we can roll <laughs> <laughs> Um I am Halima, um aka H Styles. I am a um aspiring uh <laughs> I'm gonna get my uh so I'm gonna be a certified colorist. That's my goals, I can travel and color and things like that in the near future. Not right now, but in the near future. Inshallah. Um, inshallah. Um, I'm talking about this. Um, I also, um, I've been a stylist for um, 23 years. Um, I've been a, I've been doing hair for 23 years. And you can say it again. I've been doing hair for 23 years. I've been a stylist for the past three years. Um, I'm owner and proprietor of H Dolls Hair Studio, located in Sherman Hills. That was the plug. Thank you, Dr. Um. <laughs> Um, yes, and um, I specialize in color, short hair, um, pretty much just about everything. Um, I'm not a, na I'm a natural, I do natural hair, but I'm not a naturalista. I'm not really into, um, like locks and things like that. I do know how to really twist them, but that's not my thing, so I stay in my lane. Um, also, I'm founder of, excuse me, also, I'm founder of, um, Her Beautiful Growth, which is the title of my book that I'm writing. Also, um, the opener for the non uh, nonprofit organization um, called Her Beautiful Group, which targets women in general. Like um, my motto is "I am every woman," from abuse to um, incarceration and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of women think that when you uh, have certain obstacles or your back has been against the wall, you can't succeed or you can't prosper, you can't do different things, and um, that's not true because I've been there and done that. I've been through cycles of abuse, um, mental, 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 physical. Um, I've had uh, instances where um, my children have been put in, you know, bad situations because of some of the choices that I made. I was incarcerated um, in 2007 for one year and six months. She a G. Shell. <laughs> looking at uh, looking at seven and a half to fifteen years. And by the commission of a law, my craft saved me because I had every plaque, every solid gold book that I've done since the um, since 2005. I've been um, um, covered in uh, solid gold, and I bought all my books, my pictures, my plaques, everything. And the judge looked at me like, "What, what are we doing here?" And she let me go. She gave me probation and um, parole, and what humbly led. I've been exonerated of those charges within the past two years, and. Um, it's been it's been definitely been hard it's been rough but like i said any woman that's ever felt like they've been hurt they've been beat on they've been trampled on walked over i've been there done that you know i know what it's like 
to go to sleep with a headache because I didn't eat because I had to make sure my kids ate. So I always tell people like, don't let any pitfalls that you pitfall that you ran through in your life deter you from being greater, being better. So that's what her beautiful growth is about because I have grown. <laughs> I have really grown, and I'm like very happy with the woman that I've become. I try not to get emotional, but um. You but know, it's, it's emotional. Yeah, it's, I, I've been through everything. It's hard. It's, Other it's people really, who have been through that will you appreciate know, your story. And when Humbly left, I had an opportunity to work with some heavy hitters in the industry. Um, the Cynthia Lumsey, uh, Crystal Williams, Salon Crystal, um, Jillian Garcia, which is um, artistry for hair. I worked with Gerard Gerrard, who was Tyra Banks' hairdresser. Sonia Miller, uh, Leon Hutchison. So many over the years. And, um, I'm blessed with humbly laugh. <laughs> humbly laugh. And may Allah continue to preserve my craft and protect me from the iron and me. Oh, but uh, that's, that's who I am. And um, with explaining, uh, like I said, it's hard building a business, constructing a business. So on um, September 3rd, I have a class coming up, which is uh, Business and Basics, according to H. Styles, where I'm going to explain how to start your own business get situated with your business, understanding your business, understanding how to run a business and keep things afloat. And as Jamila said, as a stylist, you have to stay educated. And I'm not being shady. There's <laughs> no no ins and outs with that. I literally, literally, literally work with these six-figure stylists for a reason. These people had these classes and I break my necks on. I don't care if it's 500, 600, 700, whatever I gotta save up to go to these classes, I get there because it's a reason why they're six-figure stylists and they all have something to give. And that which they give me, I plan to give to somebody else and so on and so forth. And um, that's that's who I am and that's what I'm doing. Mashallah. All right, um, Jamila. Yes. So we know you a mommy. Mm -hmm. How how does um, motherhood and entrepreneurship work for you? It has its ups and its downs. Um, like Mondays, it's supposed to be my days off, but a lot of our classes are scheduled on Mondays. So sometimes with my children, my time gets cut. Like I would like to spend the entire day, morning, and evening with them. So my day gets cut if there's a class going on. You know, and they, they're usually a lot of classes. So the time gets cut, but I'm also able to make it to doctor's appointments, make it to plagues, award ceremonies. I'm able to schedule my, to build my schedule around me and my family. So for me, business is great. I love doing what I do. I love being behind my chair, but I love my family. You know, and I have a great support system. I'm going to be loved. So it's some help there. You know, like right now, my son, current my son and my mom and my sister is watching the kids. So I have some help. I'm not alone in this. And it works for me. I, like I said, I love working for myself. I like working with others as well. I'm not denying that. But to work for myself has worked for me and my family. It allows me to provide a great life, be it need love, for me and my children. You know, so for me, it works. <laughs> we figure it out. I win it every day. <laughs> I wait and I can't I don't know if it's maybe for trying to do multiple businesses at oh, once no. but I cannot find the proper structure but, I, but you know what I don't, I don't have an a, a to Z book so I don't want to give that impression like it's always gravy I've had some breakdowns where I've sat somewhere like oh my gosh when the kid's <laughs> sick I gotta go to work and I still have to or I gotta go to New York because I have to meet this person to do this or I'm gotta sit in this class and I gotta get this certificate and I gotta do this and that. But the kids are sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, ha I've, ha I've had those days, but we gotta get up. <laughs> you know, like that's just the way you have to get up and you have to continue working. Sometimes I go to work and there's some things weighing on my heart or there's some things at home or with my mom or my sister and I'm like, what am I? But I still have to go and I have to go to work. So it ain't always peaches and cream. So anybody who thinks it is or anybody who says it is, it's mine. Oh, know? I know for a fact. Life Look happens. at these bags. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these Life bags. Happens, you know, so some days I wing it. Don't get me wrong. Some days I get up and I'm like, you know what? 
I ain't gonna hire him so weak to try. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put him in the least wrinkles. I mean, it happens. Mm-hmm. You know, this I'm week, always wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> so if I get out a great day in my overgrown and iron key mark in shape, any cow, I am winning that day. <laughs> you know, I'm winning that day, but I wouldn't change anything. I'm glad. Sure. Oh, my kids, ooh, I had like, 24, 20, and 18. And oh, they grow got kids. everybody out the house except for the little girl. Well, not everybody out the house because the twenty year old is still home, and you know my um my eighteen year old is home. But they everybody had two graduates, and I, this is my daughter last year at school. So I was move. moving shit. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but um as far as like uh I was close. Yeah, <laughs> you was almost you there. Was close? Yeah, you was almost there. But having a family, um, I still find time and. And the only guy I didn't mention, Naja Aziz. Naja Aziz also I work with, and she is amazing. And sure after is. her class, I, after her class, yes, after her class, I um, I actually changed the grammatics of her, hers and Jillian's with the two classes that changed the grammatics of how I handle my business because with a, with uh, with Naja, it's so crazy to me because all the people in Philly. Like, majority of people from Philly that were in her class, when she was going around asking, like, oh, well, what time do y'all open? And when they were saying, oh, well, I'm such a such, I'm from Philadelphia, they were saying 10 o'clock. And she, like, stood there and, like, was like, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all lazy. Like, she's like, y'all lazy. Like, like, lazy. Mm-hmm. This woman literally starts her business, at, and I mind you, she's a six-figure stylist, starts her business at 5 a.m. every morning. That means she goes and she opens up, she sets up 5.30, her clients are being shampooed. Like, and she's a mover and a shaker, but... A lot of people don't know she came from corporate. So with her coming from corporate, you know, she's only been a stylist for 10 years. So with me having 13 years more experience than her and listening to how she run her business, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like, she you gotta start stuff your game. She, she got, you gotta, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that day, like, you know what I mean? She'd be like, no, this is the guy for right now. No, seriously, like, literally that day, it changed a lot for me. And then even with her, like, with how, you know, you change, t- take your pictures and, you know, how you deal with your clients and what your salon look like. Like, it changed a lot. It changed a lot for me. And with Jilly, with um, with Jillian, Jillian is the bomb thing. If anybody found her artistry for here, yes. Gigi, she is major. And I don't know if anybody knows that she gave me a lot of shout-outs because... Like, when I tell you I vibe with her and she, like, broke it down to me, I, I was doing 10 heads a day or more. So, and this is just washing curls, color, so on and so forth. But at one point in time, I put my, found myself, like, leaving the shop 12, 1, 2. After doing color and stuff like that, I was letting people take advantage of me. Just giving people any kind of time. So, when she broke it down to me, like, what are you doing? And when we sidebarred on that joint, because when she asked, like, listen, how many clients do you do a day? I told her. She was like, you doing 10 to 15 heads a day? Yes. She like, what is wrong with you? This woman do five kids a day. <laughs> five kids a day, and she's booked till next year. So I'm like, what the heck am I doing wrong? She like, get you a style seat, set up them appointments, you open from this time to this time, and stop letting people take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. And that's it. From that point on, smooth selling. I have a two part question then mm-hmm. for y'all. Do you feel like in order to be that six or seven, figure stylist that you have to open at 5 a.m.? No, 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 because I, I start my day now, I start my day at 7 a.m., right? But to be that five, six figure, well, we're not even going to talk about five, but we're talking about six figures. I'm, 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 I'm we, we in the fives, but I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking six figures. Six figures when you know you're getting at a couple of hours, because it's like at the end of the day, you know, if you pulling this at the end of the year, you good money, you know what I'm saying? And you, like, with me, I noticed that Last year, I was in the, you know, like a our little, I was comfortable. But this year, I changed things, and it's like, yo, I really can do it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have, I'm not ashamed to say like, and I'm not afraid. And like I said in your law, oh, it was for me, it's for me, and that what that that which is not will pass. But I went from making, I'm gonna I'm give y'all a roundabout. I'm not gonna give y'all an exact. Last year, I'm gonna say I made fifteen thousand. That year. I'm just saying this is just a ballpark. I'm not saying that's the exact amount. But it doubled this year. You understand what I'm saying? But by changing some of the, some of the things that I do, some of the ways that I handle my business as far as, like, the clients. Because, like I said, you have to give people a vibe they can't get nowhere else. And you got to continuously keep educating yourself. When people see you doing different stuff, they start paying attention. Yep. 
You know what I'm saying? And and we think that social media is a platform for us to just say whatever, do whatever. And it's not. Because when you're in business, social media is very important right now. And what people don't cool. understand is that it's an information superhighway. People look for couches on social media. So if they sitting there around looking for a stylist and they hashtagging and different things like that and it comes up. Somebody about to break us. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> I'm like, you should have said that. I'm like, so it made me sound like I can't chew and bubble gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's like uh, you pay attention to your social media presence. And when your social media is trash, that's what you want to attract. Mm -hmm. So if you putting out you got to put out what you want. Mm -hmm. So when somebody look at my page, that's why if you go from a year ago to two years ago and you look at my page, your page and you look at it now, changed. that thing popping <laughs> basically because I changed my mindset. And one of the other people that helped me was Natasha Somalia. She had a class in 2015 at her salon. And it was part of her Muslim mindset um, thing that she was doing, but it was something else. And the girl from uh, Glam University had made this video. We sat here and we watched it. And after that, I was like, "Yo, you got this!" And it changed everything from that point on. Like I said, I've become a stylist. You heard how many years ago I said that was, right? Mm -hmm. We in 2017. So from 2015 until my mindset changed from that day. So I give Natasha a lot of credit. I really pat her on the back for that because she didn't have to open her door and do that for us. But she did it, and it really changed my mindset. So literally, from that point on, I've been grinding, I've been searching, and I've been trying to find my niche. And it's just, I just move and shake how I got to do within my business to better it and do what I got to do. But it's, it's, it's not about getting up early in the morning. It's about what's in your heart. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's really literally what's in your chest. No, but I agree. I agree with the... Cause even though I'm not behind a chair at 5.30 in the morning, I'm still up. I'm still up and I'm still searching something. I'm still searching for a way to better business, a way to what class is coming up next, what type of entrepreneurship programs that I can go and sit in because I feel like I can learn from anyone. I can take something from a teacher that's willing to give. So I'm always looking to better myself, to better business, period. So whether I'm at work or not, I'm still working. So do y'all find it hard and, you know, like they say, everybody wants a microwave career, right? So they don't want to work for it. They want something fast. And so I feel like this is the era of, uh, it's not you part anymore. Everybody it's like the wigs children. and mm -hmm. I, I think the closures. Like how do you and stay? And everybody ball headed underneath there. Yeah, so how do you stay? <laughs> everybody <laughs> ball headed. <laughs> everybody <laughs> ball headed. <laughs> Take care of their hair. Everybody wants these wigs. And I like, like blue, I feel like if you want something fancy, and in the end, you're gonna be left with nothing. That's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. And I feel uh, better when I can work for what I got. Me, don't. It's been plenty of days. I'm like, no, I gotta take out a loan to get this business going. No, I worked from the muscle where I painted my own shop. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I had a business partner in the G, but we worked together. We built that business together. Don't get me wrong, a lot of people from the community aided us, aided us in it, but we did that from the muscle. You know what I'm saying? We struggled to build a business. And that, that's the reason why I, myself, appreciate where I am today. And I'm going to appreciate a lot better next year when I'm somewhere else. I don't want to be the same place that I am here now next year. I am constantly want to build to be better. But I want to struggle. And I know it may sound crazy to other people when you say you want to struggle. struggle make but you what happens is that I'll appreciate it. Yeah. You understand? I'll appreciate my work because at the end of the day, this is my place. <laughs> yeah, I struggle enough. I just want to be in butcher. <laughs> I ain't going to I ain't saying I'm going to struggle. No, I'm going to listen. By next year, I want to be close to the six figures. That's but all you I'm do agree about. that you yeah, I, 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 Listen, listen, listen. When I say I had my share of struggle, it's time for. I don't want the young struggle phase, okay? I want to be happy, content, know what I got to do to get mine. Ain't no struggle, no. And I if it's by law permission, mission, exactly. I appreciate all my struggles from back then. I just want to keep pushing forward so I don't have to see none of that no more. To be better. That's the goal. That's the goal. Like to be better. With Not to stay stagnant. Exactly. With the weeds, the bad part about it is I took the trichology class. And these jokers don't even understand. You're creating your own problem. Now, that's anybody that's listening, and you got that old lace front on and that baby hair, adult hair, whatever you want to call it, and you got 
braids <laughs> and all this extra stuff in your hair, and then you sitting around, you look up, and you wonder why the edges is getting thinner and thinner and thinner, and now that's why the baby hair on that lace front is going back further and further and further. It look like a Nike sign. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> it's because you're developing traction alopecia. Traction alopecia comes from, it's man-made. Traction alopecia is something that's man-made. It's something that we create for ourselves. So a lot of times, we get people that create uh, traction alopecia from the weeds, from the soul winds, from this, from that. And it's like you got somebody braiding your hair. They braiding it with the weave hair. is yanking your hair. And I was a victim of doing that to people. I was, I was fell victim to that because I was doing it to people when I was doing my weaves. But my clients never had bald edges and issues like that. But it can happen, especially when you have people who are not doing correct installation. So at the end of the day, you know, people are creating their own issue. And traction alopecia is a big thing right now. So you'll have a lot of clients that, you know, um, <clears throat> non-Muslim and Muslim that will come sit in your chair that just took a weave out. And you sitting there like, what happened? What happened? What happened? Oh, I just took a weave out. Oh, okay. So you know that's traction alopecia. That hair might not go back. Now, what what exactly is traction? Traction alopecia is like a man-made form of alopecia where the, your pulling and attention causes that follicle to come out and never go back. Um, and you have situations where it may grow back, but a lot of times their hair don't grow back. It doesn't. I think I have it. A lot of times it comes from people not caring for their hair in between the installs. No, 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 no. Traction alopecia is man made. That's the. No, no, no. I'm not just saying that. I'm saying, like, no, sometimes <laughs> it comes from not, not the traction alopecia itself, but people when their hair is falling out, period, oh. they don't take care of their hair in between the installs. Like, I got a client who all year round, she gets weaves. And we just got her to pass six months. So I'm like, no, you got to come in at least once every six weeks. We're going to do a treatment. We're going to do this and that. But you have people who just put the weave in, take it out, and put a new one in. They're not caring for their own hair. And attraction alopecia, that's something different. That's not my, because I, I don't do weaves. That's not something that I do. So I, don't, I ain't really familiar with that as I am with people not taking care of their hair. And it comes it come, like with people doing braids, wearing braids also. Like even even the yarn braids and stuff. If you ever see somebody get yarn braids and it's like, if you see somebody and they got bumps and pimples all around their neck or them edges, when you see that little white follicle sticking up or it's coming out or you have it, it's all throughout the hair, that's because you're popping it. It's, you're pulling it out. So at the end of the day, like your, your body is built to fight things. We, we're, we're created, our body creates enzymes and different things like that to fight all certain things so your brain will literally tell that part of the body to shut down that's it so now you have a situation where you got a section that your hair does not grow back and the first thing you do is like oh i'm not getting weaves no more because i just need my hair to grow back now i'm bold skin bold like a baby's butt now you want to come sit in my chair and say i want my hair to grow back weird <laughs> <laughs> <That's a laughs> <cow's way>. like, <laughs> what you want me to do with it like <laughs> So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a serious situation. And unfortunately, you have a lot of people, like I said, that are coming out the box and just thinking, oh, I can do hair. I'm just going to be a stylist. I'm going to put in weaves. And not realizing that you're really damaging somebody's hair. And they really kind of don't care because they don't even know they what to do, to, how to give a proper to trim, how to shampoo the hair properly. I've had clients back in the, like, when I first start, stopped doing the weaves, I had a lady come to me who had mold in between her braids. Mold. Mold, mold from getting her hair done, her stylist shampooing it and putting it, you know, leaving the weave in there for three months, but she getting the maintenance in between. But you're not drying the braids in between, so now you got spores of mold growing in between these braids. I would have been sick. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, like I remember that time y'all had a girl come in. But what are some of, I guess, the best styles that you would recommend for you know Muslims? Because I'm always in and out the house you know and you know not the camel or something like I got a ponytail but I feel like when I had braids I think I might have had that alopecia I was talking about you know my natural hair right. my natural hair so I stopped wearing the braids because mm -hmm. I kept getting them right take my hair out wash and put the braids back in mm -hmm. and all my edges fell out so now that my edges is back my hair back from traction from them pulling it too, too tight. tight too tight too tight, tight. just do it but they don't hurt though not as tight. Mm -hmm. even if they don't hurt they don't have to hurt, but then you might not be a person that's you might your scalp might not be sensitive to a braid. You might have what they what they like people say tender hair. I'm an extremely tender hair. Okay, you pull it this hair, yeah, you want to fall out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom about 25 times in between one braid. If you braid my hair tight, and then it's like, all right, I'm done. Like you can't braid my hair. I'm cool. 
Like, I would get up. I done got up and walked away from many people cheer. Like, never mind. I'm all right. Don't rock those. So, I'm so scared to get braids. But, like, what? You know, what you can get condition. You can get your hair conditioned. Um, also, like, there's Hair 360. We have, I have um, a ProPlex treatment, which is something that can keep your hair straight in between, you know, like, bristles and, you know, um, and will do and different things like oh, that. Oh, what's that called? Three, six? I'm coming. Oh, I French mean, braids. Like, when I yeah, yeah, French braids. Different French braids, I think, are, like, one of the most, um, the lightest tension kind of pull like, a braid or whatever. But they won't be bulky up in the No, they won't be bulky. You can get them flat. You can, you can get them. That's the best thing about them is that they flat. I like French braids. When you get, like, five, you can get, like, five or six, and you shave them still late. Like, I got a French braid right here on the side. I, 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 I don't like braids, so <laughs> I, yeah, I, I I don't like braids, but I love French braids. So I, I like curls. French braid is, but that's the big braid inside. It's the inside braid, like oh. the other braid flip inside. Yeah. I like those because I don't like the 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 lump. And it don't make me look as boyish. Like it looks girly for me. He get preserved as sexy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to, um, 7.40, right. nobody calling. We talk right. too much. Um, no, somebody called, but Aisha left him on hold. Sorry. <laughs> that was Aisha that did that. If you're still listening, we apologize. No, no, so we definitely want to thank you all for coming out. Thanks for yeah, inviting um, us. So I had a great time. We have, um, uh, we have an announcement. So Jamila and I have a partner. She is now my business partner. Woo-hoo. Um, yeah, she is my business yeah. partner for Covered in Business. She has her MBA in business, so I think that she would be um, great for Covered in Business. Mm-hmm. And we will be starting. I'm proud of y'all. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. We will be starting um, six week business courses. Um, starting when? September 7th. They'll be every Thursday. Um, for an hour from 6.30 to 7.30 at DIY Cafe. Um, technical assistance classes so that we can help um, our community learn about business but also learn about how to keep a business mm-hmm. like we talked okay. about today. Definitely. A lot of us have the talent and think that we could be business owners but it's a lot that goes into Also attend my class September 3rd also at DIY Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> And and I'm all about you know I'm all about helping the community, supporting the community, and I think that that's the only way I can grow and receive my blessings from the Lord is to continue helping um, bless other business owners as well, and you know hopefully give you all you know a new platform to continue educating people. You know you can't if you have knowledge on something, you should not keep it to yourself. Um, share the information. You if you got it, if you got to charge for it, charge for charge? it. I don't think anything is worth it. You know what I mean? Yes, mine is uh, it's $99. Yeah, uh, it's my $99. Really <laughs> <very special. laughs> <laughs> Click the link in my bio, H Styles, okay? $99 right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to wrap it up and we will see y'all next week at 7. I'm going to go next month then, Charlotte. Seven, right? This is time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.